Welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we're going to talk about self-employed individuals and income tax implications. Is it better for you to operate a business as a sole proprietorship, or should you incorporate into a company? If you incorporate into a company and become the sole director of the corporation, what are your responsibilities? If you set up a corporation and later you find out that things aren't working out the way you planned and you decide, well, maybe it's time to shut down the business, do you personally have to pay all the debts of that corporation? Or this happens as well. What if you get sued from an angry client and a judgment results? What happens then? Well, to walk us through this and a lot more, my guest today, Glenn Steiner from Allen Marshall and Associates, licensed insolvency trustee with offices in Alberta, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and Prince Edward Island. Glenn, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having us, Wayne. This is going to be a heck of a show because to be uh, talking about self-employed people and income tax, we've got a lot of information to cover. Yes, we do. (laughs) (laughs) So small business definitely makes the world go round you probably have noticed it in edmonton the number of people starting businesses is just phenomenal it's just been absolutely wonderful but i think when it comes down to actually running these businesses there's a lot of questions they still have so let's just dive in sole proprietor versus an incorporated company can you explain the difference absolutely so A sole proprietor is someone who essentially sets up a business. It's a small business. A good example might be a guy who sets up a landscaping business. You don't really need a corporation because you're young, you're starting out, you're cutting lawns and doing landscaping. And essentially, um, I want my lawn cut. Uh, you set up a trade name as a sole proprietor landscaper, so it might be Glenn's Lawn Cutting Service. And you see my ad in the paper, you call me up and say, how much uh, do you charge for your service? I look at your lot and I say, well, it's going to cost you $150 a month for me to cut your lawn through the month. So a sole proprietorship is somebody where you don't necessarily have employees. You're doing it on your own. And the key to remember, though, is that when you're making money, so let's suppose you have many customers, and as a sole proprietor, you're bringing in $4,000 a month. Well, as a sole proprietor, you are entitled to keep uh, your expenses separate. You're, you're a business, And you want to make sure that you're acting like a businessman, keeping copies of all your receipts for your business expenses. Because as we all know, CRA will not allow you a business deduction if you don't have the receipt to prove your expense. So in a sole proprietorship, you want to keep good books and records, but you also have to remember about income tax. You need to set aside income tax as you go along because I don't know how many times in my career I've heard, Wayne, where somebody says, oh, this is wonderful. I made like $50,000, and then come springtime when they file their income tax, suddenly they owe $10,000, and they're going, oh, my God, where am I going to get that from? So you always want to make sure that you're setting aside money for the tax man. Now, in regards to a corporation, a corporation is obviously a limited company, Uh, A person wants to set up a corporation. Usually it's fairly large. Usually you have employees. And one of the things that's good about a corporation is you cannot pierce through the corporate veil. So, for example, I set up Glenn's Enterprises, Inc. And I hire a few people to go into renovations and projects. And I, uh, the reason why I want to set up a corporation, it's because it's easier to get WCB. Uh, a lot of um, organizations will not even let you onto the property if you don't have WCB. So you have employees, and as a corporation, you have WCB protection. And in a corporation, you have better tax benefits in a corporation, tax 
corporate tax is less than uh, in a sole proprietorship, whereas in a sole proprietorship, you're paying income tax at the general individual rates like anybody else would. But uh, uh, there is a lot of advantages to corporations. But one of the strong points that I want to make, Wayne, to the listeners, if you're thinking about going out there and starting up a business, do your research. Make sure you understand what the differences are between a sole proprietorship and a corporation. I've had people come to me and I'll ask them, well, do you operate as a sole proprietor or as a corporation? And they look at me and said, I don't know. If you don't know, you shouldn't really be in business until you know those answers. So very, very important. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, what they do is they they start out and all of a sudden business can take off very quick for a lot of different businesses. So then all of a sudden they're starting to talk to people and soon enough they get some employees. So that's kind of an, I, I, you'd think you did a great explanation of when it's time to get into an or- incorporated company. But oftentimes that person who started that business still, you know, may want to be like the sole director of the corporation. So what happens then? Like, what are your responsibilities within that incorporated company? Well, essentially, as a director of a corporation, you're the CEO and and uh, executive director of the corporation. You call the shots. It's your responsibility as a director to run the corporation as you see fit. Now, obviously, you're going to have a bunch of employees below you and they're going to be doing some of your duties but at the end of the day as a director you're ultimately responsible for the activities of the corporation if you have employees uh, anyone who is a director of a corporation knows if you have employees there's a term called source deductions very important that you understand what that means and what is all entailed So you and I, we work for a a company, we get a paycheck. When you look at your paycheck, Wayne, you see income tax deducted, CPP, EI. And what that employer is doing is they're deducting that money off your and my paychecks, and that is like trust money to CRA. It is the corporation and director's responsibility that that gets to CRA and everything gets put into their corporate account. However, what often happens in corporations is they get this money and they just have a little bit of a tight month. So they've deducted monies off our income tax, our CPP, and our EI off our paychecks, but they don't send that money right today because we're a little short on something else. So they use that money to fund something else Mm -hmm. and it doesn't get paid. And then next thing you know, Uh, You have a large source deduction issue. The other thing is GST. When we talked a little bit earlier about sole proprietorship versus corporation, you don't have to have a GST if you're under the 30,000. And if you're just a sole proprietor cutting lawn, you don't even need a GST. Uh, But in a corporation, as a director, you do have to charge GST. And again, those are like trust monies. And if you collect a bunch of GST money, you better be sending that money to CRA because you're the director. That money has been given to you in trust to pay back CRA for those monies that you collected. So as you're talking, I'm instantly thinking having a good bookkeeper would be critical. Oh, it is huge. Very huge. It's very important that you have impeccable records because if you ever get audited, uh, you want to make sure that your books and records are very good. Right. But because of the nature of this show, let's continue on with that person who started that that corporation and all those things you were talking about, they're a little bit short, so they didn't have the money to send in that GST money or the tax money. And they go a couple of years, things start going sideways and they decide, okay, things aren't working out properly. Time to maybe shut down the business. Do they personally have to pay the debts of the corporation or how does that work being that it's kind of an individual on its own? Well, that's a great question. So uh, a corporation, again, that it's, a, it's two separate entities. So if I set up a corporation, Glenn's uh, Restoration, Inc., I set up that corporation, and it's a, a limited company, and those debts of the corporation belong to the corporation. Unless I personally guarantee a debt of the corporation – 
I'm not responsible for the corporate debts. That's why a lot of people will file a corp, will, will set up a corporation is another big difference between a sole proprietorship and a corporation is if your corporation does a job and it gets sued and it gets sued for $150,000 and, and a judgment happens, well, that judgment is against the corporation. It's not against Glenn personally. Mm-hmm. And I might have a half a million dollar house and creditors cannot touch my house. My assets are protected. And that's why people will sometimes set up a corporation to preserve your your uh, personal assets. If I run as a sole proprietorship and I set my business up as Glenn's Landscaping and uh, I get sued as a sole proprietorship, my personal assets are at risk. And creditors, if they got a judgment against Glenn, then they could come after my personal assets. So that's another difference between sole proprietorship and corporation. And that's a pretty big one because if you've got the landscaping business and all of a sudden you wipe out the prized petunia that is uh, worth 25000 bucks for some reason, they come after you personally for that. Yeah. Yikes. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's the, yeah. the other way, at least uh, you, you get a little protection. They're going after uh, the company. Very good to know. If the corporation yeah. fails, there's no assets of the corporation. Do you, how does that work? Like, does the liability still go against you personally? Or is it only if you guarantee, personal guarantee for the company? Right. So what happens uh, in a, situation where a company is winding down at the end of the day we all know that you can't get blood from a stone if the corporation is winding down it's no longer a viable business um, and you decide to shut it down once all the corporate assets have been liquidated there's no corporate bank account all the monies have been drained out if your corporation owes thirty thousand dollars in debt There's not much that a creditor can do because, as I said, you can't get blood from a stone. So at the end of the day, you will uh, essentially wind your corporation down, let the creditors know that you can no longer make the payments as they generally become due. And often what happens if there was some personal guarantees from the corporation, what an individual who was a director of a corporation will often do is file either a bankruptcy or a personal consumer proposal with me. So you obviously are, are there to, to walk them through. If they if they have questions, they have a situation, always best to reach out sooner rather than later. And your area has really hit hard, and you did see a lot of people who started businesses when everything went sideways. Right. And let's face it, there were so many people that were affected when the pandemic hit, the the small businesses and hairdressing, you couldn't even go get a haircut through the pandemic and all those people that were involved in that industry and the the, the gym industry. Uh, I don't know how many calls I've had recently where people were affected and at the end of the day, they just couldn't make a go of things because there was no business. The, uh, the economy was taking a huge hit for those types of people. The oil patch slowed down. Uh, it was a really crazy time, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when we look at it, it was like a major two major whammies in a row that happened for many people in Alberta. So, yeah, it, what would be your advice? Because you mentioned that there was a lot of bailouts that were kind of happening, or they were trying to help uh, Canadians, and still, a couple of years later, maybe still the, they have a huge debt behind them. So they come see you. What are you saying to them at that point? Well, again, we go over all of their assets and all their their liabilities. If if they're looking at it from the perspective of a corporation, one of the first questions that I'll ask the director of the corporation, is this just a temporary lull? Is this something that the business is just a slow time and it's a really harsh year this year? Uh, is your business viable? Do you have the cash flow to survive the the um, the low periods of time? Like we all know that businesses have peaks and valleys, 
And, you know, if you're down in the valley, can you crawl up the hill when the business comes back? A lot of businesses are seasonal. And, you know, you keep a skeleton staff maybe on to keep the tire shop open, for example. But at the end of the day, that's the big thing is that you have to ask yourself, is the company viable? Mm -hmm. It's probably an uncomfortable conversation. Yeah. To to say the least. Any final words of advice here uh, regarding self-employed individuals and income tax implications? Well, I, I do want to talk a little bit about director's liability. So if you're a director of a corporation, Revenue Canada is the um, government agency that wants to make sure that, that you were playing by the rules. You remember when we chatted about when income tax, CPP, and EI is deducted off her paychecks? Mm, yes. Well, that is source deductions. That's trust money. And in a corporation, because you are the director, you're ultimately responsible for sending that money to CRA. If you do not uh, have a successful business and your business closes down, and remember we talked earlier about, well, what do you do if the business closes down? Uh, you cannot have, you cannot be held responsible for the corporate debts unless there's a personal guarantee. Well, Revenue Canada has the right to raise what they call a director's liability against directors who did not pay GST and who did not pay all of their source deductions for all of their employee deductions. So if you're a director, make darn sure that your bookkeeper shows you that you're setting aside money and sending their remittances to CRA, because if they do not, CRA can assess you personally for that amount of money. Wow. I'm currently I'm currently dealing with a gentleman right now who he has a thirty thousand dollar personal liability for source deductions and he thought that he was scot free. And I said, No, unfortunately you're not scot free because they can raise this director's liability. So I just encourage listeners again, get legal advice, talk to business owners, get do your research because it's very important that you understand what you're signing yourself up for. I really appreciate it. And I think our listeners too, what a great big topic. Glenn, thank you very much for being on the show today. All right, thank you for having us. Well, thanks again to my guest, Glenn Steiner. And if you want to learn more or schedule a free consultation with Alan Marshall and Associates, licensed insolvency trustees, you can go to www.wecanhelp.ca. And that's it for today's Debt Matters podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, if you want more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks for listening.